Alright, hey guys, we're just um, doing a teardown on this old ADSL um, Telsh, uh, Optus um, modem here. It's an old ADSL one we had at our house for many years and we've now just upgraded to a um, Telstra Max. So, I thought there's no need for this because we're now on different um, broadband connections and we're with a whole different provider so we thought you know, well, I thought I may as well tear this apart and we'll have a look and see what's inside of it honestly I don't really think there's going to be too much that's going to be too important or anything too interesting inside but it'll be interesting to see at least what we'll find so right now what we have here is uh, four screws it's really hard to see I'm trying to stay in um, camera for you guys. So here we currently have four screws. One, two, three, four. Well, the four that I've found so far. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take those four screws out. The um, bit is a hex screw as you'll be able to see here and it is a uh, heck oh it's a T10 hex T10 if you anyone was wondering not that it's probably any interest nice little feature that this little um jeweler's um, tool combination thing I've got here is that it's got a magnetic tip so you can pick up screws that are in you know well for example here this was just sitting in here so you couldn't get it out very easily with your fingers unless you flipped it over so that's a nice um, feature so I'll continue to take out these four screws We got another one here. ADSL, from what I've been told, is now a very old um, system. Not many people use ADSL. It goes through your, um, or what I was told is that ADSL uh, used to or still does for those who haven't been able to upgrade. Um, it goes through your communic uh, through your telecommunications, so your phone line, and then you have a splitter, which will then split it from ADSL to well, it will keep it at ADSL, but it will split it so that you can um, have your phone line on it and also um, a the modem. So just trying to get this up. Uh, Cap off. I'm not too sure how to get this guy off here. There we go. Just got a bit, bit um, force hole with it. I just uh, shoved my finger in this little crevice here and just ripped it open. Girls probably shouldn't do this because you know you might break your nail or two. And oh, I know from experience from my girlfriend, it's a devastating feeling apparently I don't see how but to each their own I guess <clears throat> I'm gonna get roasted for that one I can just feel it all right so as I thought not really much to it but this is pretty much what we have inside a Optus ADSL modem so you pretty much just got your um, motherboard, you got your power inlet, it comes in here, you got your fiber optic, so this is connected up to the NBN but as you can see here, you got your DSL or ADSL, then you got your two phone connections, so this one actually, uh, I'm not too sure how this one works, so I've too young to really um, appreciate the standard of interneting apparently back in the day because now in Sydney on the northern beaches where I live I get a um, download speed of about 
45 to 50 megabytes a second but that's due to our um, plan being on a business plan due to my father with his business and also where we live there's a um, main networking tower at the end of our street which when they were putting it in and they were doing up the um, networking in our street they just piggybacked off that main line that went off down to the um, uh, network tower so the internet in our street and I've heard from a few neighbours their um, internet speeds are really fast and it's not actually to do with the actual um, service provider it's actually to do with the fact that our connection lines um, connect straight to a communications wire so you could almost uh, to a communications tower so you could almost say that you know we're first off the list for you know network packaging to be sent to our property or to our um, addresses type of thing but anyway that's a bit of a ramble so I'll just get it back onto the track here we've got a um got a couple of heat sinks we've got one guy heat sink here and we've got another heat sink over here which is kind of interesting you don't really see these types of things around too often in my opinion especially not on these types of machines these are really old um, ADSL connections so just gonna have a bit of fun pull it apart and we'll see what we come up with um, well, for example, here, here's a bit of a heat sink. <laughs> it's actually a really good condition. Seeing how um, old this modem is, I gave this a um, air blow with the compressor yesterday, RV. So that's why it's really clean. But it's been sitting on a shelf for quite a while, and it was pretty dirty to say the least which was kind of wiring so we've actually placed our new modem in a um, cabinet to try and prevent it from getting just caked in dust and it's actually really disgusting and then this is just a clip here so it's hard to hold the camera and you know move stuff around and pay attention with what I'm doing all at the same time but yeah, that's just a clip that held down the heatsink, as you can see in here, and your thermal paste or your heatsink paste. Here's another um, uh, heat heatsink. In here, we actually have some capacitors. I've been doing electrical at TAFE, so these are our capacitors that hot stores electricity. So if a power shortage goes down, what these capacitors actually do is they allow enough electricity to be held so that it can it can turn off gradually without just you know snapping off and then losing all their information. So this is pretty much like a life support for five seconds so that the modem can save its um, data. From what I've been told, this might not be correct, but from what I understand, these are to, you know, as a safety precaution if the power was to go out <coughs> excuse me that it'll be able to shut the modem off gradually so it'll be able to save the past information that was stored on it and then in here as you can see you've got your ethernet on the floor you've got fiber optic which is there and then you can see you've got a um, Uh, processing chip there and these actually all have their own processing chips oh, two on their own you got one processing chip for one and two and another for three and four and another for fiber optic and then in here this is kind of interesting to look around and see how this works you know I've never really noticed how these really work this looks like to be a um, 
Uh, what would you call this? A um, resistor. I'd say these are resistors here. Why I'm not actually, I wouldn't say they're resistors. I don't know what they are actually. But yeah, this is just a, you know, just a quick video of pulling apart an old modem that we no longer need anymore at our house. I remember though, back in the day, uh, it would probably take maybe four, five hours to upload a 30 minute video on YouTube, and now it takes about 15. So, still quite a bit of time, but it's much better than what it was, I have to admit. But yeah. This is just a um, tear down. And this is actually interesting. They've actually. Do you know? It's 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm making a racket as usual. This actually has a um, USB port, so you'd be able to connect up a hard drive and share information and data throughout family. And you've actually got another um, USB port here as well. And then we've got our. Uh, these two buttons would be for uh, there. If I have it the right way around, WPS and Wi Fi on and off, and then the USB connection and the power switch. The power switch is right here, as you can see on the symbol. That's where the power cable goes into. That's a fiber optic. Third, four, one to two. Another USB factory reset. Telephones one and two, and the DSL. So this actually doesn't have a split on it because of the fact that the phone lines can actually run straight off this modem. What this modem also allows to have um, possible is to have the saving of voice messages and voice recordings to be saved on here through the two um, landline connections but then who uses landlines anymore around here I don't think anyone does honestly just kind of weird but I know my parents are constantly always on the landline saying oh it's easier to use a landline than it is to use a mobile phone and you're just like, well, you guys are 70 years of age, so you're a bit out of touch with modern technology, mum and dad, but, you know, what can you do? Anyway, I'm probably going to end this video here because there's not much else to be talking about, so give me a like, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what you enjoy about this video. Pretty boring, I have to admit, and it's boring as batshit. I took a cover off a modem. And we have this. Pretty cool, huh? Not. Anyway, hope you guys have been well. Give me a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me if you guys were interested about these types of things. I've got actually a couple of modems at home that I could pull apart. As I said, my dad works in um, a business area, so we need the um, shuffling of modems quote apparently close quote to um keep up with network speeds but anyway thanks for watching see you guys all for next see you guys all next time bye for now